Hi everybody, how are you doing? So my name is Adam and I'm part of the uh, youth team here at Dorish Christian Fellowship. So welcome. Okay, so today then we're going to talk a little bit about our faith and uh, how we practice it, how we live it out, the journey that we're on. Okay, so I'm going to uh, let you into uh, a little bit about me. Uh, so I don't really get on with Facebook. In fact, I never have done. I do remember it when it kind of came out, so back in the mid 2000s or something like that, and uh, and uh, I kind of was into it then. I guess had a lot of friends who were on it, uh, still are, um, and uh, but yeah, never really kind of you know you know paid it a great deal of attention. And after a while, it kind of uh, ended up being just me kind of saying Happy New Year once a year, and that was it. Wouldn't ever go on it any other time, um, but throughout this lockdown period, I have become reacquainted with it. And you know what? It's changed loads. Um, it's not the Facebook that I remember at all. The Facebook that I remember was a timeline of friends who would, you know, post pictures of their dinner. And, um, and, and that, was, that was kind of it, really. It wasn't, you know, much more than that. Now, it's just full of adverts and it's full of kind of uh, sponsored posts and it's really politicised and um, and yeah, it doesn't seem to be so much about your mates anymore. It kind of seems to be about what Facebook, you know, wants to kind of talk to you about and um, and wants to, you know, kind of uh, try and sell you. So, um, yeah, a very, very different experience and it hasn't won me over. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I'm still not interested in Facebook, um, but it has kind of got me thinking. Uh, that, you know, uh, uh, behind the scenes, you know, that there are these really kind of complex algorithms, aren't there? There's all this kind of maths going on where Facebook is trying to figure out um, what I want to hear for the purpose of selling me something, I guess. So all these adverts, you know, they want they want to sell you something, don't they? Whether it's uh, an ideology or something actual, you know, that you're going to buy. Uh, and so... Um, but it does have a, a rather kind of knack of knowing what I want to hear. And I guess this, is, this you know, it, it kind of takes what you're clicking on, doesn't it? Or maybe even Google talks to it. I don't know. Um, so let me give you an example. Uh, I, um, I seem to have a lot of posts about uh, being healthier. So whether this is um, exercising more. So there's all these kind of very buffed up guys doing stuff with exercise. Um, or... Uh, um, kind of health food stuff as well. I seem to get a lot of posts about kind of eating more healthy and uh, uh, yeah, and kind of the latest kind of fad and all this kind of stuff. Um, now, I don't really have any interest in that, unfortunately, because I mean, I, I've, I've never ever gotten on with exercising at all. Um, and I can eat healthy at, at times, but a lot of times I don't either. Um, and I, I'm aware of this, you know, I know that exercise is a good thing. I know that eating healthy is a good thing. But for whatever reason, I struggle with it. OK, I really do struggle with it. And I do wish that I could do better. I would like to be healthier, would like to be able to exercise. I really would. Um, but it does seem rather difficult for me. And so it kind of got me thinking, is faith a bit like that for you guys? OK. You know on the one hand, don't you, as far as kind of how you practice your faith, how you live it out, that, for example, reading your Bible uh, regularly is a good thing. You know, it's a really important thing, isn't it, as a Christian, that we are reading our Bible. It's how we primarily uh, learn about our Lord. Um, or prayer. You know, it's, we know it's a really, really important thing as Christians that we talk to God on a regular basis. Uh, and also being part of a Christian community, you know, being around other Christians, being able to kind of, you know, fall back on each other, rely on each other, build each other up. Really, really important stuff. So you kind of know that they're all there and that, that they're important to do, but you still don't do it. And you know what? I'm going to be the first to put my hand up here because, you know, I, uh, you know, I will openly admit that my prayer life could be deeper. It really could. You know, I'd love to be able to spend more time reading the Bible, but... Um, it, it, it doesn't happen as much as I maybe like it to. Um, and I don't know about you, but I mean, I can have the tendency to kind of beat myself up about it. 
certainly this whole kind of eating healthy and exercising, I beat myself up about that. But, you know, with, with say, for example, prayer, I can beat myself up. And you know what Mark was talking about this one of his videos um, a couple of weeks ago? That we do, don't we? You know, we know that we should be praying more, but we don't do it. And then, of course, you start feeling bad about that, don't you? A bit depressed, maybe, and kind of beating yourself up. And God doesn't want that. You know, he clearly, God does not want you feeling guilty or bad about uh, maybe how little you do pray or how little you do read um, your Bible, for example. Um, and I think, that, you know, that we can sometimes put a lot of pressure on ourselves. We kind of kind of heap all this kind of expectation. Maybe we've got it in our head as well that, you know, that, you know, that to, to be a good Christian, we should be doing this amount of work. Maybe this amount of prayer makes me a good Christian. Maybe this amount of Bible study makes me a good Christian. Maybe if I attend this life group and if I do this and I do this, well, I'm a good Christian now. And it doesn't work like that, you know. And certainly God isn't, you know, kind of going, oh, great, yeah, well, you've done that, so we can tick that off for the week, so you're in my good books. Well, it's not like that at all, is it really? And I think, you know, this is where we kind of really do kind of, we put so much pressure on ourselves and we break, don't we? So I'm going to use a, uh, an example that maybe you can all relate to. So if you kind of think to yourself that our faith journey is a bit like sitting for an exam. You go to exam, you do it, yeah, and then you either pass or you fail. And maybe you're thinking your faith journey is a bit like that, that you go to kind of like, you know, get to the end of the week, go to church, and then you can reflect upon it and go, well, yeah, I pass or I fail. I did this, great. Didn't do that, didn't do that, didn't do that. Well, okay, bad Christian, failed this week. Well, it's not like that at all. I think it's more like, um, almost kind of like you have a piece of coursework, okay? You might be thinking, well, this is no better than a test, is it? But this piece of coursework is a lifetime's work, okay? And you add to it little by little, every day, but just little by little, you know, doing those little steps um, towards kind of growing deeper in your relationship with Christ, getting to know God more. You're just kind of adding to it little by little. And you can take your coursework to your teacher, God, and God loves it. You know, God loves it. God loves to be able to go, do you know what? Yeah, you're doing great, you know. And so it's all about striving towards this marathon journey, not striving towards these little sprints, get to the exam and pass and fail, but striving towards this marathon journey that kind of is, is, is lifelong, isn't it? But the striving is important. OK, it's really important that we do do our very best to kind of do a little bit each day to kind of grow that little bit deeper with Christ and God. And so you can do that through your you know, your, your Bible study, can't you? You can do that through your prayer. You can do that by being around other Christians and and learning and, 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 and growing deeper in fellowship. But don't treat it like, you know, like a, a, a tick box kind of thing. You know, don't put that pressure on yourselves. Um, but do strive, okay? I'm going to give you a really good piece of advice. OK, and this came from my spiritual director. Now, a spiritual director is a bit like a, a counsellor in kind of spiritual matters. And uh, I've had a spiritual director for many, many years now. She's wonderful. I love her bits. Now, she gave me a bit of advice kind of early on. It was really when I, when my twins were, were young. And you can imagine that a lot of work. And so you kind of just, you know, you're constantly tired as a, as a parent and kind of going through that again with Ben now. Um, and she said to me, she said, you know, that, you know, if you get to the end of the day, all right, when you do your quiet time, your prayer time, if you get to the end of the day, yeah, and you have nothing left, you do not have the energy, or for whatever reason, it's just not working for you today, maybe your head's not in the right place, uh, maybe you had a really rubbish day, and you just don't, you can't concentrate and you just don't want to be still. She said, still bring God into it, but say to him, say, look, Lord, I just don't have it in me today to, to sit and talk with you. 
And she said, that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, God knows your heart. God knows what kind of day you've had as well. But the important thing here is that you're striving towards bringing God into that journey. OK, and that's what it's all about. You know, this faith journey is, is all about kind of bringing God into it and growing in fellowship with our Lord and with each other. And she said, so by just saying, God, look, I have nothing left. I'm sorry. OK, just tell him you love him as well. But I love you and leave it at that. And you know what? That's absolutely fine. But just make sure that does that doesn't become, you know, the 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 regular kind of rote response to your your prayer life. OK, so if every day becomes like, sorry, God, I don't have time <laughs> or I'm too tired or whatever, you know, that becomes an issue because we are growing in relationship, aren't we, with Christ, with God. So relationships don't kind of blossom and grow when you don't have time for the other, that you don't have time for God. So do make sure that, you know, you are putting yourselves in positions where you can just, just, you know, just that little bit every day to grow in relationship. OK. But, you know, don't put huge amounts of pressure on you, especially at this time. I mean, I know some of you have become a little lethargic, maybe, um, with the whole kind of situation. Uh, and, 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 you know, that's a lot to kind of cope with, especially with all your school stuff as well. Um, so, you know, don't kind of mount that pressure upon you, but do strive each day just for, for something. And I think that's really important, OK, because that's what that's what kind of grows our... Um, our uh, you know relationship with the Lord. Okay, there we go. Let me pray for you and uh, and get you on your way. Okay. Blessed Father, we thank you for the journey that we're on. You know, and and it really is a journey. It's a, it's a lifelong journey, and it's an exciting journey as well to be able to learn about you, to grow deeper in fellowship with you, to be able to rest uh, upon you. And uh, we just kind of thank you for that. We thank you for our Lord Jesus. We thank you that uh, he is the guy that kind of walks alongside us um, throughout this journey. And uh, what a blessing and a privilege that is to be able to walk with him. So I just want to pray over you all now, yeah. I pray for your safety. pray for your joyfulness and your happiness. And uh, we pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There we go then, guys. Okay, then. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye now.